Hi, I'm Donna Castellano with the Historic Huntsville Foundation. This year is the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. A lot of people don't know this, but Huntsville was a focal point in Alabama's suffrage movement. And we're gonna go on a tour of some of Huntsville's special suffrage sites. And we're gonna give you the inside peek at how Huntsville women made history. So this is where it all began on a cold winter night in early 1895, where Susan B. Anthony and Carrie Chapman Katz came to speak to a Huntsville audience about women's suffrage. They came at the invitation of Alberta Chapman, the daughter of Reuben Chapman, an Alabama governor. She spoke to a full audience, many of whom had gathered to hear the spectacle of the talk, but became converted to suffrage that night. That night, Milton Hume stepped up and opened the books and declared that there was now a Huntsville Equal Suffrage Association in Huntsville, Alabama. Over 25 years, the group met in fits and starts. Sometimes they made progress, sometimes they didn't. But in 1912, there was a formal association formed. This is Hillcrest. This is the house of Ella Lee Chapman Humes and Alberta Chapman Taylor, who were two early leaders of Huntsville suffrage movement. This was the meeting place of the Huntsville Equal Suffrage Association from 1913 to 1919, when it was owned by Ella Lee Humes. Interestingly, the women had organized at the YMCA on Green Street and had asked to meet there to hold their meetings there, and the board of directors refused them, stating that they were too controversial. So fortunately, Ella Lee was able to give them access to her house. We are in the fabulous YMCA lobby. This building was built in 1910 and it has been wonderfully restored. This site is important to suffrage history for several reasons. In 1912, the Huntsville Equal Suffrage Association reconvened and what better building to do it in than this fabulous structure. It had just been open two years and many of the founders of the Suffrage Association had also helped raise funds for this building. After the, the Suffrage Association was formed, they were not allowed to meet here on a regular basis because they were too controversial. But the Board of Directors did allow a state convention for suffrage to occur here in 1914. There are wonderful newspaper accounts of the building and of the women who, met, who, who gathered. All of the town came, it was open to the public, and it was just a wonderful opportunity to share with the community how equal rights and equal votes for women would change our community. In 1920, all celebrated the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Over 120,000 Alabama women registered to vote. Over 1,300 Madison County women registered to vote, including six African American. So we are at the historic marker for Lakeside United Methodist Church. This church was very important to the black community in the decades after the Civil War. It was the cultural and educational hub for the black community. When the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920, there were six women from this church who met the stipulations of Alabama's 1901 Constitution that required potential voters to meet property qualifications, to meet literacy qualifications, to meet residency qualifications, and to pay a poll tax. Six women, six black women from this church successfully met those qualifications and were able to register in 1920. So let me tell you a little bit about Madison County's first black women voters. The first was Mary Wood Benford. She married into the prominent Benford family. Both she and her, hun her husband, Henry C. Benford Jr., were graduates of Howard University. The second woman was Ellen Scruggs Brandon. She was a graduate of Rust Institute, and her husband, Daniel Brandon, had actually been elected to public office in Huntsville before Alabama's 1901 Constitution stripped voting rights from the vast majority of, of black Alabamians. Um, the third was India Herndon. Uh, she was a teacher. She and her husband owned and operated Citizens Drug Store. Uh, Lou Bertha Johnson and her husband, Shelby Johnson, owned Grand Shine Parlor, which was a very successful dry cleaning business that operated on Franklin Avenue. In fact, it operated in the building that many of us know as 801 Franklin. Her husband built that building to house his dry cleaning business. Uh, the, the fifth woman who voted is Celia Love McCrary. She owned a farm, a large farm on the property that is now Redstone Arsenal. And the sixth woman who voted is Dora Fackler Lowry. Uh, she was a school teacher. 
her husband, Leroy Lowry, owned several successful businesses in the Church Street Business District, and her son was the Reverend Joseph Lowry. Uh, while there were only six women who voted in 1920, her, her son was part of the Civil Rights Movement, founding the SELC with Reverend Martin Luther King, who helped bring about the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that opened up voting for all of Alabama's citizens, whether they were black or white.